Merly Notes, 25th October, 2022 God is the Father of all souls, which makes them all brothers. But primarily, God is the teacher, and older, greater soul, with more experience. Therefore, he calls his students his sons. The word father is often used as a title of respect for someone with leadership positions, such as Gandhi, or a mayor is called a city father. God does not teach only one Arjuna, but many are taught in his school. The use of the word Father for God is also a proof of God's existence as an individual, intelligent being. The fact that most people consider that all human beings are spiritual brothers is a proof of the necessity of God as the Father of all those brothers, without whom they cannot consider themselves as brothers. The concept of omnipresence negates the separate existence of God. This concept comes from the Vedas. In the Bhagavad Gita, it states that no one should bother about the Vedas because they are for people who are only able to arrive at conclusions based on sense perception. Since sense perception is deceptive, and since sense perception is also defined as maya, it implies that the Vedas cover only the material world and cannot provide information regarding the world of spirituality. People who subscribe to the philosophy of the Vedas do not believe they are individual immortal souls, but they believe everyone is part of one all-pervasive energy which is God and of which all people are a part. They say, we are all one, and God says, no, you are not, you are all eternally individual, and it would be good if you all would live together in harmony. For that, you must not allow your differences to bring you into conflict with each other. However, conflicting belief systems cause unresolvable conflict. Therefore, it is important to enable all people to grasp what and who is God. Thereby, they will leave their religious beliefs based on blind faith of their own accord. There is no other way to resolve religious conflict. The words teachings and purification become synonymous because the teachings of God provide you with the information you need to establish yourself in focused yoga with God and thereby draw spiritual power into yourself which in turn neutralizes any tendencies to perform negative karma. It is a clear and straightforward mechanism, even though it is very subtle and not what people assume about the process of purification. Most people believe in the concept of forgiveness. They believe that if you are sufficiently contrite, then God or his representatives can remove your sins. However, this is not possible. Incorporeal God says clearly that if you are completely honest with him about your transgressions and sincerely repent, and you make a powerful commitment to not repeat the act, then 50% of your karmic debt can be removed, but you still have to deal with the other 50% 
that is not easy. The concept of sin has to be clearly defined. What exactly is a sin? It is not as simple as not behaving according to conventional morality or not conforming to scriptural statements. What people think is a sin and what actually is a sin may or may not be the same thing. Motivation and circumstances have to be considered. Going against certain human conventions, such as dress code, has no connection with sin. Many conventions and laws whereby religious and political authorities declare this or that act to be a sin are not sins at all. In that case, the religious and political authorities are performing sins when they harm their victims, and they will be called to account through the inexorable law of karma. God's definition of sin refers to any thought, word or deed motivated by an emotional reaction to a sense perception as a result of which you go into karmic debt to the other party. When it comes to law enforcement, the military, police, etc., then particular societies establish clearly defined rules of conduct and flouting those rules results in clearly defined consequences. Certainly, it becomes a problem when the legal and religious authorities go beyond the limitation of their rights and instead of serving the people, they oppress them. In that case, the laws of karma apply incontrovertibly. How do you know what is right and what is wrong? The pure intellect filled with knowledge can sense this moment to moment, situation to situation. In addition, this assumes that they are in possession of all the required evidence. There are very few with this degree of clarity, discrimination, and impartiality. Om Shanti.